In this step, we are going to create a voting application using Maven. Why Maven? Well, it's a powerful tool that helps with project creation, configuration, dependency management, and many other things. But it also makes it much easier to be independent of the ID you are using. So you can select, for example, NetBeans or IntelliJ IDEA if you want. Let's start by creating a new Maven project in Eclipse. Select File, New, Maven Project. You can leave this as it is, just make sure this option is not selected and click Next. Here we can select the archetype. Archetypes are project steps that have some code and configurations. Filter by Vadin and select Vadin Archetype Application version 8 or later. If for some reason the archetype is not there, you can manually add it. Just click Add Archetype and fill in the following coordinates. You can find these at vadin.com slash maven as well. Right, so once the archetype is selected, click Next. You have to specify a group ID, use for example my.vadin, and you also have to fill an artifact ID, which is kind of the name of your project, use for example app, and click Finish. If this is your first Vadin application, this might take a while. This is because Maven has to download all the Vadin libraries and other dependencies, but those are stored in your local file system, so the next time you create a Vadin application, it's going to be much faster. Alright, now we have the project ready. And the most interesting part of it is this Java class. Let's go through the most important parts of it. First off, this is a Java web application, so it defines a servlet. And the servlet is configured to use the MyUI class, which is this one here. Notice that it extends the UI class provided by the framework so that you can define the entry point of the Vadin application, the init method, which is called when a user enters a web application. And it's inside this method where you can construct the UI. It's pretty simple. We have a text field and a button, and we add them both into a vertical layout, which aligns components well vertically, like in a single column if you wish. This vertical layout is going to be the content of this UI, and we use the setContent method for that. And there is just one last thing, the click listener for the button, which dynamically adds a new label to the vertical layout, and it contains a message that uses the value in the text field. The value is what the user typed in the text field. Let's run this application to see it in action. Right-click on the project and select Debug as Maven Build. Give this running configuration a name, such as Run on Jetty, and set the Maven goal as Jetty Run. And before clicking the Debug button, let's make sure debugging works properly by clicking on Source, Add, Java Project, and select your project here. Now we can run the application by clicking Debug. You don't have to do all these again when you want to run the application later, you'll see it in a minute. But now, Maven is starting a server called Jetty and will deploy the application there. Of course, you can use any other server, such as Tomcat if you want. In the end, it's just a WAR file that you can deploy to any servlet container. And you can find the WAR file in the target directory when you need it. Once you see Started Jetty Server in the console, jump to the browser and point it to localhost 8080. The application appears and when I enter my name here and click the button, a new label is added to the UI. A cool thing about Vadin is that the UI is coded with Java running on the server side, so we can add a breakpoint here, which is a line executed when we click the button, and if I click the button again, the execution stops at that line and we can use all the debugging tools provided by the IDE such as inspecting variables, for example, the variable storing data related to the click event. And we can also run step by step if we want and continue the execution by clicking this button here. You can stop the server by clicking this button or the one in the main toolbar as well. And to return to the Java E perspective, click this button. Finally, you can run the application again by selecting the configuration you created before, which should be listed here. And that's about it for this step. In the next one, we are going to add a backend that's going to be really useful in further steps of the tutorial.